few people have heard of Walter Pitts, despite his revolutionary ideas that helped set the stage for artificial intelligence. He was one of the first to show the brain function like a computer. But just when his career was taking off, a series of tragic circumstances led him to destroy his research, withdraw from academia, and succumb to alcoholism. This is the story of the scientist who should have been famous, but instead died alone and unknown. You could say the odds of Walter Pitts becoming a scientist were not in his favor. Born in Detroit on April 23, 1923, his father and brothers were rough and uneducated. His dad actually wanted him to quit school to get a job. But Walter was brilliant. As a child, he taught himself to read Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit. He found solace in math, with logic being the antidote to his chaotic life. The story goes that while hiding from bullies one day at the age of 12, he ran into the library and stumbled upon a copy of Principia Mathematica, a three-volume work that tried to show that all math can be explained by using pure logic. He didn't leave the library even after closing. For the next three days, Walter poured over the 2,000 pages and sent a letter to its co-author, Bertrand Russell, pointing out what he considered mistakes in his work. Three years later, when he was 15 and heard Bertrand was going to be lecturing at the University of Chicago, he ran away from home and went off to Illinois. He never spoke with his family again, except for sending home an anonymous Christmas present every year. For the next few years, he was unofficially enrolled at the University of Chicago. While hanging around campus, a young medical student he befriended, Jerome or Jerry Letvin, introduced him to Warren McCulloch, a professor of psychiatry at the University of Illinois. McCulloch wanted to learn how the brain worked, delving into the process by which the firing of neurons transforms into thoughts. Walter understood what was required and knew how to model it mathematically. McCulloch took him under his wing and into his home where they tackled this question. Their groundbreaking paper in 1943 envisioned the brain as a collection of tiny switches, each one turning on or off like a light bulb, and these switches working together to create thoughts and decisions. McCulloch eagerly declared to a group of philosophy students, for the first time in the history of science, we know how we know. It marked the first time anyone seriously likened the brain to a computer. Their insight into how neurons operate paved the way for the creation of neural networks, now central to the machine learning revolution. Mathematician John von Neumann based his design on one of the earliest electronic computers on Pitts and McCulloch's model of the brain. Walter Pitts was a rising star. Fortune magazine included him in its list of the top 10 young scientists at U.S. universities in 1954. He shied away from this type of public attention, seldom even signing his name to anything. Following his groundbreaking paper, his friend Jerry Lutvin once again played a crucial role in introducing him to another influential scientist. This time, the renowned mathematician Norbert Wiener at MIT, who pioneered the field of cybernetics, the study of how humans and machines control and communicate information. Walter moved to Boston after working on the Manhattan Project during the war years to work for Wiener, whom he regarded as a father figure. During their initial meeting, Wiener didn't say hello, but instead walked Walter over to a blackboard where he was working out a complex mathematical problem. Walter chimed in with questions and suggestions, and Wiener was impressed by the young man. He later exclaimed that Walter was, without question, the strongest young scientist whom I have ever met. I should be extremely astonished if he does not prove to be one of the two or three most important scientists of his generation, not merely in America, but in the world at large. He had profound confidence in Walter's abilities and believed his neural networks could be implemented into man-made machines. But although Walter's work with McCulloch was revolutionary, it was an overly simplified representation of the brain. Wiener wanted him to make his model more realistic. He promised Walter a PhD despite the fact that he hadn't even graduated high school. Walter's PhD thesis focused on developing an advanced version of his earlier brain model using three-dimensional neural networks, which was incredibly challenging and involved some very complicated math, but those who knew him were sure he'd succeed. Instead of Walter's career taking off, however, it came crashing down. When Wiener suddenly cut ties with him, because Walter was close to McCulloch, whom Wiener hated. The rift began when the director of MIT's Research Laboratory of Electronics invited McCulloch to lead a new brain research project at MIT. 
Walter, along with his friend Jerry Letvin, and a young neuroscientist named Patrick Wall were part of the team exploring how the nervous system processes information and how machines might mimic these functions. Just as they were delving deeper into the brain's workings, Wiener withdrew his support from the group, reportedly because his wife disapproved of McCulloch, who had a penchant for alcohol and wild parties. Margaret Wiener is said to have invented a story and told her husband that when their daughter Barbara stayed at McCulloch's house, several of his boys had seduced her. It's been suggested Margaret thought McCulloch's rise would threaten Wiener's prominence at MIT. Wiener immediately sent an angry telegram to the MIT director. Please inform Pitts and Letvin that all connection between me and your projects is permanently abolished. They are your problem. Wiener abandoned Walter, the young man whom he had taken under his wing. The final nail in the coffin for Walter Pitts came during a heartbreaking experiment involving frogs. While it was believed that the eye took in information and sent it to the brain for analysis, Walter's experiment found that the frog's eye itself processed visual information like movement before passing it on to the brain. This contradicted Walter's simpler, logical model of the brain, in which he theorized that the brain was the primary center for processing all sensory information. Turns out, reality was much more complex. Letvin recalled that the results disappointed Walter. He would never admit it, but it seemed to add to his despair at the loss of Wiener's friendship. Walter destroyed his thesis, all of his research, all of his life's work. With the exception of writing one more paper, he did little else but drink for the next 10 years. Gone was his interest in science. Gone were his interests in anything he had been curious about from poetry to geology to the birds of New England. In the 1950s, he moved out of Jerry Levin's home because his heavy drinking scared his friend's children. He spent the 60s in Boston's bars, changing his venue frequently so that his friends couldn't find him. He was in such a bad state that he couldn't take care of his only companion, his dog. On May 14, 1969, Walter Pitts died alone of alcohol-related causes in a boarding house in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He was just 46 years old. Pitts unknowingly set the stage for modern computing and machine learning, shaping a future that is still evolving rapidly today. Sadly, we'll never know how much further progress might have been achieved had his journey not been prematurely cut short. Walter Pitt's innovations had the power to change the world. If you've been inspired to make a significant impact in our digital era, or want to brush up on your math, computer science, and data science skills, I highly recommend Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn STEM interactively, and it's free for you to try out. Unlike spending years in a traditional classroom, Brilliant offers a hands-on approach to learning. Their new thinking and code course gets you designing simple programs to solve real world problems, like writing a program that reminds you to exercise throughout the day. As we live in a data-driven world, data sets are only getting more in demand. Brilliant's Data Analysis Fundamentals course will help you build your skill set by focusing on the best ways to visualize and interpret data sets. You can try out Brilliant for free for 30 days by clicking the custom link in my description if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up for Brilliant's premium subscription, which gives you access to their thousands of offerings, you'll get 20% off your annual subscription. Thanks for watching. For NewsThink, I'm Cindy Palm.